Zapier Tables gives plenty of automation opportunities within your zaps, expanding the type of workflows you can create. They're incredibly versatile. They can act as both triggers and actions. Let's dive in and see how they work, starting with Zapier Triggers. A trigger is an event that starts any zap. Tables has four triggers. Trigger Zap Buttons Clicked allows you to add buttons within a table to trigger zaps or even re-trigger workflows on existing records. This is an excellent option for sending emails or force updating an existing record. New or updated record allows you to trigger zaps based on new or updated records within a given table. In the zap editor, tables will show past and current data within a field value whenever you test your trigger. That means you don't have to rely on workarounds to determine if a record's contents changed. The new record trigger will watch for new records only in a given table. You can use this to prevent your zaps from accidentally running off updated records. The updated records trigger will start a zap if there's an updated record within tables. You can also choose which updated fields will trigger your zap. Since tables displays new and old data whenever you test your trigger, you can even use filter or pass to further control how your zap will continue. For example, if you want your zap to perform a specific action on a record that's changed from product qualified to closed lost, Tables also provides the timestamps for updated or created records, giving you greater flexibility when you're building zaps. Along with Zapier Tables trigger steps, Zapier Tables has seven available actions. An action is an event performed once your zap is triggered. The create record action will create a new record in a specific table. You could populate fields with data from previous zap steps or enter static text that will appear the same each time your zap runs. The increment value action allows you to increase the value of an existing number field by a fixed amount, which can help number invoices, create SKUs, or even create round robin style workflows. The duplicate table action will duplicate an existing table you've created. Zapier will copy the fields and settings from that table so you don't have to recreate a table from scratch or duplicate data unnecessarily. This could be useful if you want to follow a template for reporting bugs, onboarding, or other recurring processes. The updated records action allows you to update existing table records with the latest information from other apps. The continue zap button clicked action allows you to use buttons to continue a particular zap whenever you click it. The zap will run up until this action and wait for you to click the continue button. For example, if you want to wait until you have a certain number of records to batch send calendar invites. The updated trigger button allows you to enable or disable buttons that trigger zaps in your table, and even change the button label. For examples, you can use this action to prevent accidentally triggering zaps from time-limited processes, such as filing expense reports at the end of each month. The Delete Records tab allows you to delete a record from your table. This helps clear out records you don't need anymore, especially if you use tables as a memory bank for data to use in zaps. For example, deleting records associated with an employee once they've been onboarded. Zapier Tables has plenty of features to help you with your zaps. By utilizing the steps listed above, you can continue to create new workflows that'll assist your business. And if Zapier Tables isn't your thing, Zapier helps anyone connect apps and automate work. No coding required. You can sign up and start for free.